Hi, and welcome to the next lecture part on Naive Base. The Naive Base classifier is actually a generative multi-class technique. So in that sense, it's um, very similar to what we have learned already about LDA and QDA. And um, again, as an LDA and QDA, we use our base theorem to get a more convenient computational form for this posterior probabilities that uh, X belongs to class K by turning this uh, probability or its mathematical form around through base formula, base theorem, and then um, getting our hands on this representation here. And if we look at this guy, we see that this consists again, um, as always in this generative case of two components. One is this, one of these pri prior probabilities, pi k, so global class frequencies, so to speak, in our training data set. And the other um, component is this class conditional density here, given that we are in class k. And for this guy, um, this was kind of the main thing about the generative technique, we have to make some kind of distributional assumption. And um, for LDA and QDA, we assumed that this is a multivariate Gaussian. For naive base, we make an even stricter um, simplifying assumption that this class conditional density is actually um, conditionally independent or that the features in this class conditional density are actually independent given the class. And this means that this multivariate density actually factorizes into P univariate one dimensional densities, um, conditional densities given the class. So this multivariate density given that we are in class K is the conditional density of feature one times the conditional density of feature two times the condition, conditional density of feature three and so on until feature p. And this means if we have to estimate this guy, we don't have to estimate a multivariate density completely in one go, which is um, pretty di difficult in high dimensional spaces. We only have to estimate these p simple um, univariate densities. Uh, and we know perfectly well um, how we can do this. So let's go through the cases of numerical and uh, categorical features for naive base. So for univariate features, we can actually, again, make the assumption that these are all um, normally distributed. So this means that we have to estimate um, this guy here as a um, 1D Gaussian, which means this is parameterized with a mean value and a variance value. So we have to estimate the empirical mean for this guy and the empirical variance for this guy here. Um, so for example, we can do this for the first class. And we look at all of the data points, the data table of that class. We restrict ourselves now to the feature values of the first feature. We estimate the mean, we estimate the variance through the usual formulas, and we have estimated now our um, first univariate Gaussian. We do the same for the values of the second feature, x2, and uh, now we've estimated both uh, 1D components. We can multiply them together and get our multivariate distribution for class one. And you can also see from this construction that because we are multiplying up 1D Gaussians, the resulting um, multivariate Gaussian, or the, the resulting multivariate distribution is also going to be Gaussian. Uh, it will also have a um, diagonal covariance structure, but on this diagonal, um, these variances here, uh, which um, refer to the variance, uh, the, um, the class conditional variances um, of the features, they're not necessarily going to be the same. 
And the same stuff happens here um, for all of the other classes. And um, there is um, now no specific reason why this uh, next covariant structure, specifically the, the variances on the um, main diagonal are going to be the same. Uh, so what we are estimating is class conditional multivariate Gaussians, um, all of a diagonal structure, but um, in uh, not necessarily all the same between the classes, which means we're actually estimating here QDA model. Uh, we are estimating a quadratic discriminant model um, with the specific assumption um, that all sigma case have diagonal structure. And this means that we also know that uh, the decision boundaries for naive base between two classes are always going to be of quadratic structure. Maybe one extra side comment that I should have made before. So as for um, LDA and QDA, naive base doesn't really care whether we have two or three or seven classes. So all of the formula and the principle works completely in the same manner. Although um, my examples here will be um, 2D with uh, binary classes. How would this work for categorical features? So for categorical uh, features, we just use a categorical distribution. Uh, so assuming we have, I don't know, um, three different categories now for the feature, uh, not for the class, for the outcome, for the feature, we just count frequencies. We count frequency that given that we are in the kth class, we count um, the frequency that our jth feature um, is of value m. And we count up all of these frequencies, we put them into the regular formula of a categorical distribution, and this is now our density for um, our feature xj. And then the same thing happens again through multiplication. Um, and um, because of this super simple conditional independence structure, we could also potentially um, multiply these 1D univariate densities um, between features of different types. Um, we can you know, multiply 1D Gaussian with a um, 1D categorical. We could even make, if we wanted to, different, dif different distributional assumptions per feature. Um, there's one extra technical problem that we usually have to consider in naive base, and this is um, especially in, in higher dimensional spaces, and especially if we don't have too many observations, um, if a given class and feature value never actually occur together in our training data, then the f um, this frequency-based probability estimate will be exactly zero. Uh, so one of these guys here could be exactly zero, one of, one of these guys here. Um, and this is actually a problem because if we because we're multiplying things up later on, right? Um, and this would wipe out all informations and all of the other probabilities when this is um, uh, when this multiplication is being performed. And because of this, we will do a simple numerical correction, which is called a plus smoothing, where we set the zero probability actually to a very small values to a small value to regularize against this case. Um, I'm not I'll not go into the details here. So this is a um, very standard trick for categorical and um, more multinomial distributions, um, yeah, um, which helps to deal with this problem. Um, I guess one thing one should also mention is that specifically in the late 90s, Naive Base became a super popular um, technique for email spam filter programs. So in these programs, word counts were often used um, as features um, yeah, to characterize um, spam from non-spam emails. So maybe the term Viagra occurred very often in certain emails. And I, I guess uh, the probability was uh, highly increased that this was actually a spammy type of uh, advertisement email. Um, and then if you look at this um, from a, I don't know, a theoretical lens, we are now making the um, following independence assumption. Huh? The occurrence of two words together in any type of email is not really correlated. Yeah? Um, this seems super naive um, for such a scenario. So Viagra is um, much more likely to 
occur um, together in context with um, the words by now than probably a uh, flower or something else. Um, but surprisingly, although this, um, from a theoretical perspective, this simplifying assumption is kind of totally off, um, naive Bayes worked actually very, very well for these types of scenarios. Um, also probably um, because um, of this strong regularizing effect of us having not to estimate too many parameters. Um, so many of these systems actually had quite good performance, although theoretically they were quite off.